Welcome to Ahkam SOS, the show that discusses Islamic duties and practices by His Eminence, the Grand Ayatollah Sayyid Salik Shirazi. I'm your host, Muslim Shah, and joining me is Sheikh Ali Ma'ar. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Assalamu alaikum, Alhamdulillah. MashaAllah. Sheikh, last couple of episodes we've been discussing the different obligations in Salah. We talked about Niyyah, uh, Takbirat al Ihram, we talked about facing the Qibla, we talked about many things. Let's move on to the topic of the recitation, the dhikr, what is said in, in, in Salah. What are the obligatory um, you know, recitations in Salah? A'udhu billah as-sami'a al-alim min ash-shaytan al-rajim Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen Wa sallallahu ala muhammadin wa alayhi al-tayibin al-tahirin Allah sallallahu Recitation is uh, another wajib and obligatory in, in the Salah the acts of salah in overall however it's not a rukun it's not um, one of those key elements in which if you have forgotten to um, perform them then the salah will be batil uh, it's a wajib in other words if you neglect and ignore it uh, intentionally the salah will be of course batil now with regard to the recitation we have two types of, of recitation the first Recitation is when you recite Surah Al-Hamd and another Surah, usually a short Surah. So Al-Hamd and Qulhu Allahu Ahad, Al-Hamd and Inna Anzalna, Al-Hamd and Inna A'tayna Kal Kawthara, and so forth. This is a wajib part of the Salah. You must recite them in the Salah, in the beginning of every two rak'ah of Salah, the first two rak'ah of Salah. You must recite them. Um, so you have the Hamd followed by a short surah, for example, let's say. And you still, you can still read, read um, and recite a long surah. For example, you are allowed to recite uh, Surah Al-Asra, for example, uh, or Surah Maryam, alayhi salam. Surah and other surah. If you have time, <laughs> there's enough time, you can recite them. That's fine. And you have the, the strength and power to stand for half an hour <laughs> and recite them. You are allowed. But they must be full surah, that's important. Okay. Full surah. The com you have to complete. Read, recite the complete surah from start to end. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. And of course, um, with regard to the second type of recitation, is to recite um, the dhikr in the third and fourth rak'ah of salah okay. of, of Isha, Dhuhr and Asr. Because, and also Maghrib. You have one rak'ah to recite the dhikr, which is subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar. Okay. So that's wajib as well. You must recite it. Uh, the Sayyid, however, has the fatwa that you can recite this tasbiha once. It's not wajib to recite it three times. Okay. Unlike some ulama, they say, no, it's wajib uh, to recite it three, three times. times. Okay. So that's subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar. You must recite it three times. The Sayyid says, no, once is enough. Mm -hmm. And the three times is what? Mustahab and yes. desirable. Mm -hmm. um, however, if somebody wants to recite something else other than the Tasbihat, they can recite uh, Surah Al-Hamd only. So in okay. the third and the fourth rak'ah of the Salah, uh, as I've said, Maghrib, Asha, Dhuhr, and Asr, you can recite Al-Hamd only. You mm -hmm. can recite Alhamd uh, instead of these Tasbihat al arbaa That's fine. Um, are there any actual recommendations of what Surah to recite uh, in within the Salah? It is mustahab for the Musalli uh, to recite in the first Rak'ah of the Salah. I mean, you have the first and the second. After Surah Alhamd, of course. Uh, to recite in the first Rak'ah, mustahab to recite Surat Al-Qadr, Inna Anzalnahu Fi Laylat Al-Qadr. In the second uh, rak'ah of the Salah, and before doing the Qunut, it is mustahab to read Surat Al-Tawheed, or Qul Huwa Allahu Ahad. So the first rak'ah, Surat Al-Qadr, the second rak'ah, to read uh, Surat Al-Tawheed. Uh, that's the mustahab within the Salah. Ahsan, MashaAllah. 
Shaykh, what about um, if I began one surah, I've, I've done surah Fatiha, uh, I'm going to another surah, but now I want to change it, I want to read something else. So let's say I started with surah Ikhlas, now I want to read surah Qawthar instead. Uh, is this possible? Can I do this? It is permissible and allowed for the one to change uh, the surah, uh, even if the one reached the midpoint of the surah. So let's say if I start reading surah Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Inna anzalnahu fi layt al-Qadr, and I wanted to change the surah it's a bit long, uh, just a few seconds longer than other shorter surahs like surah al-Kawthar. I want to start with surah al-Kawthar. That's fine. I leave it and I switch to surah al-Kawthar, which is shorter, for example. Or sometimes I forget. You know, sometimes some people uh, memorize the last uh, uh, chapter of the Quran, you know, the, the juzo of 30, mm -hmm. and they want to recite Surah al Naba, for example. But on their way, in the beginning of the 3 4 ayah, they stop, they forget. Mm -hmm. They can switch to a shorter uh, surah and, and, and uh, uh, begin to, to recite another surah. That's fine. There's an exception. Um, you can switch to any surah except in two main surah. And that's Surah Al-Tawheed, uh, you know, Qulhu Allah Ahad, and Surah Al-Kafirun, Qul Ya Ayyuhal Kafirun. In these two surah, the minute you begin reading Qulhu Allah Ahad, you can't switch. Okay. This is the uh, Surah Al-Tawheed. You, you know, must the, complete the surah. Exactly. And Surah Al-Kafirun, Qul Ya Ayyuhal Kafirun. You must complete to the end. You can't switch to any other surah. So that's the exception. Shukla. Are there any exceptions to uh, you know, reciting the surah uh, during the prayer? Well, the one can actually um, ignore reading the surah, which means the surah after the surah al-hamd. Mm -hmm. Surah al-hamd, you must read it. There's no way you can ignore it. However, with regard to surah, the, the shorter surah, or let's say the second surah after surah al-hamd, um, in this case, if the time is too short, you have only two minutes to the sunrise. In this case, you can ignore the surah. Okay. So you only read Surah Al-Hamd, and then you go to Ruku' and oh, Sujood. Okay. If the time is too short, yeah. that's the exception. Um, other exception is when there is a danger. Mm -hmm. there's, a, there's a thief. Uh, it's a war zone, for example. There's a wild animal, for example, nearby. And you want to quickly pray and leave that yes. place, that location. In this case, you can leave and ignore su a surah, uh, and then you just um, read Surah Al-Hamd, and then you continue the salah. Ahsan, Shaykh, thank you very much. Shaykh, is there any other situation where one um, doesn't have to read the surah? One, maybe he just says, I, I don't want to read the surah. Um, are there any other exceptions where, you know, maybe someone's tired, or, or maybe for, for that instance, they can't remember any other surah, is there, is there any situation where one can say, no, I'm, I'm not going to read the second surah? Well, yes. In, it is not essential and uh, mandatory to uh, recite the surah, the short surah, let's say, after alhamd, in the mustahab prayers, mm -hmm. desirable prayers. For example, salat al-layl, the night prayer. Um, if you feel too tired, you don't uh, have a lengthy salah, then you can just ignore reading surah, just uh, surah al-hamd, and then you go to ruku' and sujood and so forth. Mm -hmm. So that will save you some time instead of reading the surah. So you're allowed in the mustahab to not to uh, perform uh, the, the short surah, for example. Uh, that's fine. However, in some of the mustahab salah, we have, let's say, the salah of the deceased, of the wahsha, okay. the night of the burial, mm -hmm. when that yeah. person is buried. On the same night, we perform two rak'ah salah, mm -hmm. known as Salat al wahsha yes. for, the, for the one who just passed away, um, to enlighten his, his grave yeah. as a gift uh, mm -hmm. with these two rak'ah. In this situation, uh, it's stated that you have to read, let's say, 10, ta ten times in Nanzalna, for example, yes. and so forth. We have to follow this procedure. So uh, accept these um, mentioned and recommended numbers of surah to read uh, and so forth. Other than that, as I've said, just like Salat al-Layl, uh, the night of prayer, you can 
Ahsant. So, Shaykhna, what about uh, the tartib of um, the recitation? As in, can I read a small surah before Alhamd? Uh, so, surah uh, Tawheed before Alhamd, then read surah Alhamd? Or does it have to be Alhamd has to be first? Well, if one recites uh, before surah Alhamd, so let's say an example. If I say Allahu Akbar, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ وَحَدٍ Before uh, Surah Al-Hamd, I read the short surah. And then I go to the Surah Al-Hamd. If it's deliberate, then the salah will be bottled and void. Okay. I must preserve and um, follow the sequence of the salah. Take Al Haram, Surah Al-Hamd, and then short surah, mm-hmm. or any other surah. I'm not allowed to... Um, shuffle and pray or perform the salah yes. um, in this way. Mm-hmm. I must follow the sequence. Now, um, if this happened unintentionally, I suddenly began the salah with Surah Al-Kawthar. Allahu Akbar, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, na'atainaka kawthar. In this case, I have to leave the surah and then go back to Surah Al-Hamd. So I, I say again, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, and then I finish the Surah Al-Hamd mm-hmm. and read the Surah, the short Surah afterwards. Okay. So I have to leave uh, this uh, wrong sequence and go back to the right sequence and then uh, pr- resume the, uh, the, the recitation as normal. Shaykh, what happens if um, I forgot to recite Surah Al-Hamd? So I read Takbir Al-Ihram, I, uh, I recite Surah Qawthar and I went into Ruku. And in my ruku, I'm like, oh, I forgot to recite Surah Al-Hamd and in my, in my raka, one in my qiyam. What happens in that case? Well, if you are in, before going to the ruku' and um, you are in, in the position, you must recite the Surah Al-Hamd, basically. But if you went to the ruku' and you remembered, mm-hmm. uh, you remembered that you forgot to recite Surah Al-Hamd in ruku' because you've entered into a new um, section, section of the salah, yeah. which is a key element, ruku' yeah. will come, inshallah, later on. That ruku' is a key element, and it is a rukun. You cannot go back. You cannot mm-hmm. leave the ruku' to go back to perform the uh, non-ruku', which yeah. is alhamd. Also, it's, it's wajib, but it's not ruku', it's not a key element. So you are in a different uh, section of the salah. You cannot go back and recite it again. So in this situation, um, you basically um, keep going and the salah is valid and correct so you don't have to go back and recite uh, the hamd unless you're in that state where you have to recite the hamd. So, Shaykhna, um, sometimes I hear people reciting salah aloud, uh, sometimes quietly. I mean, is there any actual um, ruling behind this at all? Yes, of course. With regard to um, reading and reciting um, the, the suwar or the dhikr, there are specific ahkam with this regard. Now, we begin with this uh, initially that it is mandatory and wajib for the male, for men in overall, to recite uh, Salat al Fajr, the morning prayer, and Salat al Maghrib and Isha, um, to recite the first two rak'ah, which has hamd and surah, to recite loudly. Audibly, in other words. That is wajib. They must recite it loudly. And when I say loudly, it doesn't mean they have to scream and shout. <laughs> because if they scream and <laughs> shout, <laughs> the salah will be out of void. <laughs> so if you, if you see somebody shouting the salah yeah. and screaming, the salah is bottle, it's void. Mm-hmm. So you must be moderate in reciting uh, the, the surah or, or the dhikr in the salah. So you start, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. That's a moderate a way of reading, audible yes. way of reading the uh, uh, the, uh, the dhikr or the um, recitation aloud. And that's for men, basically. It's wajib for men in these three sessions, uh, the morning, Maghrib and Isha, to read them aloud. Um, of course, with regard to the Salat al-Dhuhr and Asr, it becomes wajib and mandatory on both the male and the female to recite the first two rak'ah, alhamd and surah, of dhuhr and asr salah um, quietly. So they both have to observe this um, hukum. 
Shaha, when you say quietly, are, are we saying that we are very, very low and whispering the words, or are we silent and reading in our heads? What do I mean by quietly is that you recite uh, the surah in this way. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. You can hear yourself. That's okay. important. You must hear yourself. Because some people, what they do, I don't know, out of shyness, I don't know what, what's the reason, that they just move their lips. Mm -hmm. They don't yeah. actually uh, utter and, and they hear themselves. Yeah. Or oh, that's quietly. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, they don't actually um, pronunciate the words yes. that you can hear what they say. So the quietly is to say, that's why quietly. That's mm -hmm. how you have to pray and perform the, uh, the, the silent or the quiet mm -hmm. way of uh, reciting Alhamd and Surah and Tasbihat. So in this case, you have to make sure that y you hear it yourself. And in Salat al dhuhr al-Asr, as I've said, both male and female must uh, observe this rule. And also in Tasbihat al-Arba'a, Okay. Subhanallah wa alhamdulillah wa la ilaha illallah wa allah akbar. And in the third and fourth rak'ah also, mm -hmm. you must say them uh, quietly as well. So with a low voice, mm -hmm. in other words. Ahsan Shaykhna, thank you. Shaykhna, you were mentioning that um, it is uh, wajib for both men and uh, for male and female to recite silently for Dhuhr and Asr. And also for uh, to recite loudly for uh, Maghrib, Isha and Fajr. My question is that what about in the presence of a man? Is a lady allowed to recite Surah Alhamd and another Surah allowed. Uh, for example, when we're in the mosque, uh, we know sometimes that the men and the, uh, the, the males and females have to share the same hall. There's a divider in between between the men and the ladies. Um, if there's a lady, she wants to pray Maghrib on her own, um, which maybe she's standing next to the, um, very close to the, the, the partition. Is she allowed to recite uh, Salah loudly in the presence of men who are on the other side? Well, it is allowed for uh, the female to recite in Surah Al-Hamd and the short surah in the first and second of every Salah of uh, Fajr, Maghrib and Isha. Yes. She has the option to recite mm -hmm. either uh, audibly, you know, aloud or quietly. She can choose. Mm -hmm. However, if she is in public or there's a strange men, men or as they say not now mahram non mahram yeah. uh, nearby who are not her rel relatives yeah. or, or husband and so forth in this case she's not allowed to raise her voice when she reads alhamdulillah surah she must uh, um, say it silently and, and quietly yes for the subh maghrib and isha and the say says it's a precaution it says a must and it's a precaution mm -hmm. احتياط, that she must not raise her voice yes because there are nearby, no mahram, and uh, strange men, she must not uh, make them to hear her voice in the salah. What about for the third and fourth raqah? No, the third and fourth raqah, as I've mentioned, it's wajib to um, say the dhikr quietly yes. and silently. I've mm -hmm. mentioned, for both men and women. Yes. It doesn't make a difference. Yes. Ahsan Shaykh, man. thank you very much for enlightening us with this knowledge, especially in regards to keeping your, uh, you know, your voice loud or silent. I think that's something that you know, we must uh, really, really emph emphasize on. Um, and inshallah, we'll discuss more in the next episode. And thank you to all our viewers for joining us on uh, today's Ikram SOS. Inshallah, join us on the next episode. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh.